Well, there are, there are many ways to think of sustainable agriculture, and there are so many ways that it can be problematic because it can become vague, and the term has been co-opted by many um, that are not sustainable. So for me, you need a few really distinct criteria. And one of the ways I like to think of sustainable agriculture is actually, thank you guys, I, I, that's very, um, I like to think of it uh, with this gentle Zen story about a man galloping wildly on his horse and he, as he goes by a group of people, someone shouts to him, where are you going? And the man turns back and shouts, I don't know, you'll have to ask the horse. Good, good guys. And for me, the horse could well represent our runaway food system. And the man on the horse can be the farmer and the consumer. And what ag a sustainable agriculture is, is where we put the reins on this runaway horse and we put those reins in the hands of the farmer and the consumer. How do you do that? Well, that's one of the reasons I'm really excited about CBF taking a lead role in Buy Fresh because the key here really is connecting the farmers and the consumers. Um, so that is one of the major criteria for me for sustainable agriculture. Are the farmers and the consumers in the local area connected? Um, what are some of the other criteria? Well, first off, um, profitability is always important in any kind of business, and agriculture is a business. Um, farmers are in it to make a living. But in sustainable agriculture, we've got to talk about long-term profitability, not making short-term profits at the expense of the land and the environment. So how do we do that? We've got to operate our system, which the farm is, it's a system, using ecological principles. This protects the environment and water quality, and it builds the soil. And the soil is the resource that our profitability is built on as a farmer. So that is absolutely key. Um, what do we mean by ecological principles? Well, these guys are a fine example right here. Almost all the meat that people are buying in grocery stores is from animals that have largely been fed grain the last three to four months of their lives. Cows are ruminants. Ruminants are these amazing creatures that have evolved to be able to get 100% of their diet and nutrition from grass. It's a very rare thing. Um, humans cannot do that. So you are looking at an amazing creature here, a ruminant. But we don't treat them like ruminants. In a sustainable agriculture system, we are feeding cows grass because that's what they evolved to eat. And when we look at about evolving to eat, our diet evolved eating grass-fed meat. Well, here we're standing in a, a wonderful field of a crop that is gorgeous, and yet it's a crop, I would consider this maybe our most valuable crop, but we will never harvest it, we will never sell it. We grow this, and this is Sudex, which is a hybrid between sorghum and Sudan grass. We grow it to build the soil. So again, we're working with natural processes, that key for sustainable agriculture, natural processes. We're growing our fertilizer. We're building our soils. Probably the single biggest thing a farmer can do to protect the environment and water quality is to build up the soil quality on their farm. This crop, which we call a cover crop, is very valuable because when we talk about sustainability, working with ecological processes, uh, protecting the environment, cover crops are absolutely critical to everything we do here on the farm. First, these cover crops are building our soils. That is the most important thing as farmers that we can do to protect water quality in the Chesapeake Bay. Soil quality is absolutely primary and essential for good water quality. 
Soil quality is also what I'm building our profitability on long term. So cover crops are something we could not do without on the farm here.